Hello and welcome to the club. I'm your host, Philip Quinton, and this is the Upper 90 Club, a roundtable podcast where friends discuss whether or not they filed their tax returns. Uh, on this episode, we're going to review the uh, the stunning shootout win against G. Grace on Tuesday to move on to the semifinals of the C3 CONCACAF Champions Cup Tournament against Monterey coming up next week. We are going to uh, review the interesting... Uh, uh, Chip of the hat, Lars! Thanks, Ben. Uh, contest against RSL uh, this weekend. And then we're going to read the internet and do our predict picks. There will not be a Crew 2 update, but uh, we'll... We'll see our RSL review as as uh, as a good placeholder for that, with as so many of our uh, of our reserve type and uh, and bench riding uh, personnel Ka-ka. making uh, making a big debut. Uh, so, uh, with me in the club are Ben, Trey, and Haas. Say hey, guys. Hello. 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 Um, yeah. Pardon the rasp. I've had the flu. Uh, and am still recovering. Neurovirus. Morton is in Boston. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stacy's running the the twenty six mile race there. Um, I'm told they'll be they'll be coming up with a clever name for it someday soon. <laughs> and uh, so good luck. Yeah. Good luck to them good out luck. there. Um, Mort is uh, also he had he had too many consecutive appearances on this show. So yeah. he is resting. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also true. Um, Red carded. We yeah, thought we could set up. a record, but we decided to say screw it and just. Yeah. It's more fun to just hang out in the the uh, luxury suite yeah. with all the uh, the red cards and <laughs> all, so the, all the I, red cards. Well, uh, Schulte. So I'm uh, just talking about the RSL game. Schulte, Nagby, and Cucho. We're all having hanging out in the fun. Box. Did you see them? They, yeah, they looked every time great. they flashed, they were like laughing at each other, like telling jokes. And I was like, "Man, look at those friends!" They're kind of a uh, kind of an odd thruple, though, right? Because totally. like you've got Cucho up there who's like in trouble, right? He's there because <laughs> of a red card, right? And, He's in detention. And then yeah, Nagby, we could only surmise was just given a you know an attaboy. Uh, you've You've played 108 games. Sit this one out because you know you've done a great job or something, right? Like I don't. He's not injured to our knowledge. So, yeah. but why was Schulte there? Just because of the two PK stops, or <laughs> judging? Like, look, all right. So if you stop two PKs. Judging, you get to hang out in the luxury box. I would Maggie say. And yeah. Cucho. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, Probably the free drinks. No, I'm saying it probably judging by his, he, the fact that he's a party animal. I'm assuming mm-hmm. Monterey, he like went out on the town, was just chugging Red Bulls and like throwing change at people. And they were just like, Ugh. I was like, I can't go. Yeah. I can't go, Cap. Okay. I can't go, Cap. Right. <laughs> so the orca took over the volcano. Mm. I love it. So, uh, yeah, so let's 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 do talk about this uh, this T Grace game. Um, the only thing to uh, talk about before the the almost immediate goal that that he gave up in that game would be the lineups. Haas, go through those, and then we can uh, jump into this game here. So this one we started with Hinestroza, Cucho, and Rossi up top. Yeboa, Jones, Nagby, and Farsi across the middle. Chaberco, Camacho, Morera in the back with Schulte in goal. Morris was out from his red card from the first leg. Right. Yeah. So, and then, yeah, I mentioned that there was a very early goal. Um, I don't know. What would you think about 
what do you think about this this lineup? I mean, it's clear that we're going that we're you know we're not staffing half the crew two team or whatever, right? Like we're we're going for this game, um, but but tough start from Schulte. Um, I don't know, just a silly mistake, right? There were there were uh, people were um, re- referencing the Steve Clark goal. Uh, or the Steve Clark give up, which I don't uh, remember, right? Yeah, I know. I know that's <laughs> I'm sorry. The, that's the party line, but um, huh. I like Steve. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Steve says, uh, "Oh no." Well, so what? I mean, what do you guys think? Like first half, we had a, a bunch of a bunch of uh, interesting kind of near goal type. Off was he offside? Was he not? Kind of thing, but like spoiler, um, he was. T- Every tough, time. <laughs> tough way to start, right? Yeah. I mean, we forget that we were still debating up until they released the lineup if Cucho was even going to start or even be there. I mean, right. people were speculating like the day before, like, he's not even in Monterey. And then he like sends a picture and they're like, he's in Monterey. But and Camacho's back. Yeah. First game back from injury. Yeah. So well, it was actually good this to see. Was, this was probably the best lineup they could have fielded considering who they brought down to Mexico. Yeah, it had to have been. It was a rough first half, though. I mean, so stressful watching yeah. that. It's, yeah. It's hard to remember because, you know, we it's, it feels like every single time we played like a game on Tuesday, it's like, what year is it? Like, I was going back and watching the highlights right before, and you guys were on, and I was like, it, it seems like it's all Tigris. I remember it being like a lot more like 50-50 or whatever. I felt like we controlled it pretty well. And maybe that was just because I'm used to seeing like every away game, people don't play their game and we played our games and we actually had the most possession. But yeah, I forgot I, all the almost goals they had or the goals they had in the yeah, outside. It was, I, it was very much a tale of two halves though, wasn't it? I 100%. mean, I feel like, yes, there were goals. I mean, didn't they call one back like shortly after the... Sixth minute, yeah. Yeah, sixth minute, yeah. And then there were others. Um, I think there were two other chances that were either, you know, Schulte had like that outstanding stop. 37 they had, minute. They had the one where the guy uh, passed it. Uh, just what was that? What was that dude's name? Flores passed it yeah. so clearly offside to. Uh, <laughs> he just. Tapped he should have just shot. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And, and the like, VAR, yeah. for some reason, took 48 minutes to figure out if it was offside or not. Like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I d- so anyway, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that, like, that happened a lot. And while you're watching that game, I mean, you know, we gave up that early goal. You're basically just waiting for the game to be over, right? I like, felt yeah, like it could have been 4-0 in the first half. Yeah, yeah. And, and so that first half was just kind of like I, I was resigned to – you know, just walking away and being done with that tournament, but it it switched in the second half. Um, I don't, I don't know that we were like looking super dangerous, but it just didn't feel like we were about to lose it. And with the score line being at one to zero, um, it was awesome to see them hang on. And then our uh, on again, off again boyfriend Diego Rossi <laughs> put one in. I feel like. I feel like the uh, variability of our our takes on him is uh, our, our most dynamic. Yeah, Facebook, uh, it's complicated. Week. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> or you're on next door and you're like, whose cat is this? Yeah. Uh, it's so like I, a high I've school relationship. Up, it's like, I I've love him, up, I hate uh, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've used up my voice for, for this five-minute block, so what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the first half, I don't remember it being as – oh, crap, we should have got scored on. And after looking back, I was like, oh, man, they probably should have had some things. I, I just remember complaining about uh, who was on the call, Stu. And I like Stu, but it was like when yeah. that first one where he got uh, Jones, he the goalie, or uh, Schulte passed it to Jones, and the guy, like, kicked it. They were like, did he miscontrol that all the way back to that guy? Because if so, he's not offside. I'm like, no, he didn't miscontrol it and pass it right to the guy on the six. Like, it was ridiculous. I was a little frustrated at whenever I felt like we were getting some type of rhythm, it felt like we got it broken up. They did have, again, in the first half, like 12 fouls or something ridiculous. Like They had yeah. 20 in the game. Yeah, it was the it, it was another one of those games where I was like, all right, 
again, they're not terribly dirty. I mean, also keep in mind that Jones basically got a, a flip it, reverse it, where that guy went over the top of the ball and he cleated him. Yep. He ended up getting a yellow, which was a which was a good call, and I, I agree it was a that's what it was. But for all the people out there that was like, oh, when he did it, it was a hundred percent a red. I'm like, it's the exact same thing. He went over the ball and almost broke Jones's foot in half. But it's like, mm. oh, no VAR for that. But the, it it seemed it seemed very weird. I, I felt like we controlled it pretty well. Like, and to respond the way we did, I don't know. After that first. And also keep in mind that they didn't water the field. They, he kept saying that. Did you guys pick up on that? So the ball would play slower, which would oh, yeah. which would and all the grass was longer. so weird. Yeah, so weird. Which bit them. First which half. bit them on the thirty seventh minute where the ball got played across and Schulte was able to make that diving save because the guy played it in on the ground and the grass slowed it up just enough where Schulte could get there. They just would have watered the grass instead of being jerks. But I did think it was it was significant the second half because they they said on the broadcast like they we, they watered the fields they got it all ready and like we played way faster the second half. I mean oh, I think yeah. I think it was it was two you know two things can be true. I think that we came out stronger, but also keep in mind we got scored on, but we had to score anyway. We couldn't not score in that game. Like the them scoring was kind of irrelevant yeah. like we had to score we couldn't zero zero and go going on. into half da- only down one zero felt like a win yes well and coming right out of half in like the 50th minute with y'all getting completely taken out in the box oh i should have completely been a forgot about that yeah that was yeah. crazy did he also get his calf mouth. stomped on oh yes. yeah and that, they that didn't even a, look at it. That would have been the second yellow to that. Um, I saw it slowed down, and it looked like it was on purpose. Like, yeah, but it was also. I mean, it it should down. have been a second yellow. It's it's a textbook yellow card, which would have been his second yellow red card. But right there, were, I thought the ref on the field had a, a really good game. I thought the VAR was rough. I mean, the fact that it didn't even get reviewed for Yao's obvious foul. I mean, every pundit. Everybody on Twitter was like, "That's a hundred percent a a foul in the box." It was and, good and to it see was. Lawless. Lawless was actually losing his mind about it. I know. Which it's good when national media are paying attention like that. So, yeah, yeah. but he was like, he was also on the halftime call, right? Yep. Like he was, he was, yeah. he was plugged in. So, um. Do you want to talk about that goal he gave up? <laughs> we haven't really had a positive I mean, to play by play. His oh, third minute, yeah. third minute, Marrera plays the ball back to Schulte. He tries to pull the Cruyff turn. Would have had him too. Gignac yeah. Yeah, is maybe. applying some heavy pressure. Basically, has gifted the ball right in front of the goal and just taps it in. Yeah, I think the problem was Schulte had such big balls he slipped on them when he was trying to croif inside the six against one of the strikers like he kind of has no yeah. business try to like do you, at the for all the people that the cappy two final the first year when we were up four nothing he tried like a step over same thing and that's how st louis scored like trying to juke mm-hmm. out their striker and the same thing happened but uh, so if no. it weren't for his play the remainder of this match it would be a, a complete Correct. gaff. The saves that he made in the actual in the run of play in time, and then in the shootout, to me, man of the match. Oh yeah, Rossi Easily. scores a goal, but Schulte is the man. It has for to sure. be. He has to be. Easily. So yeah, the 59th minute, the crew equalize with a goal from Rossi. Uh, the ball's played out wide to Cucho on the left. He cuts back and beats his defender, dribbles into the box. Plays a ball to a streaking Farsi. Uh, he tries to take a touch near the penalty spot and loses the ball immediately, but luckily Rossi's in the right place at the right time and basically runs onto it, shoots with his first touch, right foot across the goal and in. Uh, I was freaking out. I I mean, the fact that Farsi was up there in the first place, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> he he's the one that's getting this ball played by Cucho. And of course, his touch is terrible. Or... It was a far perfect class. <laughs> <laughs> Farsi class at assistiology. Nailed it. 
No, you're yeah. It's I when it went in, I I went nuts because we were on the front foot, right? Like we came out swinging, and that was not our first like you know pressure in the box type thing. It was like a totally different half, and I thought even from then on we had we had the better of it. I I was reminded of my mindset in that Cincinnati Eastern Conference game um, where we had a tough first half and things just changed. I, I mean, it, they didn't fatigue in the same way that Cincinnati did, but um, we we took that game back over. We, we wrestled that game back. And when it went to the shootout, um, we 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 just fought and won that won that game. Were you, you know, were you guys was, convinced in the shootout when we stepped up to do the the shootout? We were like, we got this because I was like, I don't, I, this could go either way. Well, there, I don't know that I had enough time to to go back and forth on it. I just. I, I felt the same way that I did with Cincinnati, where it was like at the end of the first half, I was thinking, we're going to lose this game. It's okay. This is part of being a sports fan kind of thing. But they, man, they... Sounds like a far weather fan. Up. Yeah. No, not really. I don't think that's how that... I don't think that's what that means. Yeah, but. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hard to say. Hard anyway. to say. Yeah, so... And then they they held him in the in extra time. I... Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember any like miraculous saves or anything. It was the, almost an own goal, uh, in the oh, ninth right. minute. We almost Herrera had it. got the ball to the end line and plays it in towards the six yard box, goes off the defender and their keeper had a crazy reaction. Just like, oh yeah. Punch to yeah. take the ball out of the net. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was as close as we came. We, I mean, we did make some subs that were kind of curious. Like, you know, Matan came on for Derek Jones. First time we'd seen Matan in a hot minute, right? And he gets subbed in for a position I haven't seen him play yet under Nancy or even under Porter, I don't think. He played as a basically a number 10 or an 8, you know, right in the middle. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah. that was weird. And then Will Sands gets subbed on, and I haven't been terribly high on him since he's come back, especially in, like, that environment is, like, kind of crazy. Arston came on at 106 for Farsi. I mean, I thought actually Arston played pretty well when he got on. I thought he was like kind of dangerous. But when well, Amundsen came on in the 75th for Camacho, Jason Russell Rowe for Henestrosa in the 80th. Yeah. And so we were without Zawatsky too, which I think is actually kind of a big blow. I mean, Aiden was huge. Hey, that that game Aiden, missing shouted, Aiden was huge. Yeah, that was yeah. an Aiden Morris game. Like, all right, it's going to get scrappy, whatever. I mean, it, the, he would have been, it would have so been great. still to see. out on like protocol, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought Nagby played great. I, I just feel like I remember him getting fouled constantly, just putting his body in the right position to draw a foul. Yeah. No cards, uh, but I mean, yeah, we were getting the calls, but just not the cards. So, what do you guys think of the shootout? I mean, Schulte good got big uh and Real stopped big. the first two um was Did, this a i don't know was this, was this all Schulte was it were there i mean I, I didn't think their their shots were not bad he was he was moving to get to him he saved him he yeah. was good i well he saved two and and got a full palm on on the another th- yeah. I mean that's all yeah. you can ask for. I mean that's more than you can ask for from your from your goalkeeper. Cucho's PK was off the post. He missed. Or did so? Did you hear that he said that he he took that slot because he wanted to win the game? Yes. And so <laughs> what the the quote that came out of that was pretty much you know they had a list of people who take PKs and obviously Arsten got subbed on. He was one of them. Um, same thing with Russell Rowe. So, like, they they identify that it might go to PKs. That's I'm assuming that's probably why they got subbed on when they mm. did. Yeah. That being said, he's like, yeah, I just handed them the sheet and walked away. So, like, whoever took it, took it. And Kucha was always the fifth one. And then, yeah, sure enough, he's like, well, I can win out in the fourth. Cool. And he trots up and misses it. And I'm like, man, <laughs> yeah. I really didn't want that to happen. Like, he kind of no, needed no. that to happen. And then when Arston came up on the fifth, was anybody else like, 
Arston is taking this one. I was nervous. Yeah, I was yeah. so nervous. He wasn't, and he I was don't understand cold, why he man. wasn't. Yeah. Well, and apparently the refs talked to him before his shot and told him, "Do not celebrate until we blow the whistle." Um, which is why it was really weird when he made his PK and like, just everyone's just standing around, yeah. like looking <laughs> around. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they told him that. I did not hear that. Yeah, because I was like, "What a weird it. reaction." Maybe he had like a little baby stroke. We want to make sure like, we happened? can't overturn it before you start celebrating. <laughs> yeah, I did feel like we were gonna get like Schulte one of the saves. He was gonna be off the line yeah. or something like that. But he played strong, man. Yeah, and that yeah, there was no uh, Concacaf shenanigans on on this one. I thought you know there'd be something, but. I'll take it. I mean, you get, you win a, a PK shootout at, well, in Monterey in Mexico at Tigres. That's amazing. And I don't that think they've lost in a, like a year at home. And we are the first team to go away after not winning the first leg, needing a result in Mexico. And we're uh, the first team to do that. Unfortunately, like, that stat, as impressive as it, it's yeah, wrong. I, <laughs> yeah, they mentioned they actually they lost had, last they week. Lost, they lost three <laughs> days prior. Yeah, it was the, the but they had not lost. Oh, Tigre, they, they, they had not oh, lost. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, got it. They they, they got that out of the way. First game that weekend, dude. That's a flex. Yeah. That way they're just like, hey, we lost, so like we should be good for Columbus because it can't be like can't yeah. happen twice in a row. Well, there was definitely. I mean, yeah, for as long as it lasted, everybody dumped on MLS and Messi and everything else the next yeah. day in Monterey, but. Um, but really, for that, for that post game again, it it had feelings of the whole Orlando away, Cincinnati away. Why not us? Impossible as an opinion. It was great, man. I'm looking forward yep. to seeing how they do against Monterey. I just here want to be in the locker room. I need him. Like when I wake up in the morning, like today's gonna suck, and he's just gonna he's gonna say something, and I'll be like, yeah. "You're right, man. I'm gonna figure it out." <laughs> <laughs> well, so now we go on to play Monterey mm -hmm. um, Tuesday the 23rd. The time is not yet established, although FOTMOB has it listed as 4 p.m., which would be weird. Um, okay. We play at home, right? Home first? I think I feel like that's up in the air as well. Um, I actually don't know that, yeah. D is it better to play at home? It's listed as us first? playing at home. Okay. It, do we want to play at home first? I feel like we almost kind of do. I feel like we do better I, if, if we go. You wait, know. no, it's listed as us playing away on the 23rd. Oh, okay. And then home Weird. on the 30th. But again, none of that is in stone. I think that's the times and everything are supposed to be announced Monday the 15th tomorrow. All right. Yeah, because we've got, we've got Portland at home and then... Um, Montreal at home. So it'd be like a midweek trip. You gonna read the Cirque? This is Steve Cirque, and this is a Cirque stat. He said there's only one truly massive MLS team. Messi ain't on it. Uh, he said the Cruz victory did manage to break the crust of apathy that exists towards MLS amongst Liga MX fans. They won in Mexico and did something even rarer play attractive football. Yeah, boy. Um, the Mexican press took note with some wondering whether MLS was finally making significant inroads in terms of quality. That lasted less than 24 hours. In the later stages of Wednesday's night's encounter between Miami and Monterey, <laughs> two reporters offered their own evaluation on MLS's quality as Messi and co. struggled. Esto es MLS. Translation, this one said to the other unimpressed, is MLS. We'll be right back. Hey Columbus, are you looking for a place to get fit but don't know where to start? Pure Strength and Wellness has everything you need to achieve your personal goals. Whether it's focusing on fat reduction, increasing mobility while decreasing pain, or just generalized fitness and stamina, Pure Strength and Wellness provides one-on-one -on -one personal training to get you where you need to be. 
Located at 734 Garden Road in beautiful Clintonville, their 4,000 foot studio is the perfect place to begin your journey. So come on in and speak to a qualified trainer to find out which is the best fitness package for you. All right, we're back. You guys do your taxes? Yeah, dog. I got a CPA yep, on that Got them done today. Got that child tax credit. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. same. You know what's crazy is I didn't realize I owed money for that. So they withheld my state because they're like, you owe money. And I was like, what? And I called and they're like, yeah, you owe like almost the exact same amount for having the kid. Like it went into collections or something because I, I don't know. I don't pay, I don't pay medical bills. Who pays <laughs> medical bills? I don't. So it was basically like having um, socialized health care. So that was kind of nice. You do work in in the healthcare industry, don't Most you? Most definitely, yes. Okay. Yeah, he does. I owed one dollar. Don't pay it. There's Federal no way. Stick it to There's the no man. way. <laughs> way. With all the rounding, with yeah. all the rounding, one dollar. Did you claim that you donated clothes? That gives you twenty five bucks. Not anymore. Not anymore. Thanks, Obama. You know. <laughs> uh, do you do you guys think that uh, Morgan's going to claim Zawadzki as a dependent? Absolutely, he should. I hope so. He has him every year on his birthday. <laughs> yeah, he has him <laughs> every, every year. year. A new, new same, new uh, same one. Okay, let's talk about the RSL game. Speaking of dependents, um, the Crew Two game. Yeah, it was very Crew Two. Um, it's just so bizarre, guys. I mean, I'm going to ask Cause to go through the lineups, but like, this was not expected. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I could not think of a time when something like this happened where we're just like kind of mid season hanging out. I mean, these guys have put, been putting in minutes. This is still I can't the keep the game the straight. Season, right? I cannot keep the game straight. I don't have the mental yeah. capacity. We're sitting on here talking about games. I can't. I cannot keep them straight. It's There's impossible. too many games. We have too many games. And I mentioned it in the text thread. I, I referred to it as too much ice cream. It's like, yeah. it's just like the novelty. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're, Do I'm, you I'm like ice tired. cream? Yes. I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm getting tired. There's so many games. Yeah, you're also sick. Um, the yeah, flu. That, that's right. That's right. It's that's like right. the soccer I needed, flu. I needed to be in the luxury suite hanging out. Not being right. as contagious as you are, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, well, depends on whether I whether I, I'm contagious or not. I'll send you this microphone after we wrap here, and then you let me know <laughs> if you get the flu. Um, okay. Pause. Go through the lineup <laughs> from the RSL game. Uh, last night. So we had Matan starting. Matan, Jason Russell Rowe, and Taha Habrun getting his first ever start for the team. Oh, yeah. Will Sands, Morris, Zawadzki's back, and Arfson across the middle. Amundsen, Camacho, and Quinton got his first start of the year Ooh. with Bush in goal. Quinton. Um, it was our fifth game in 15 days. Heck, come uh, on. Give us a break, Don. This is a break. We don't have a game. We have one game this week. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was surprised by the Phil Quinton thing. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. Rather than go through, I mean, there were zero goals. Allegedly. Spoiler alert, there were no goals. Okay. Um, which is a real, that's a good thing, frankly. We it, we it, saved a point, a point with yep. this insane crew, uh, lowercase crew, uh, lowercase C. Uh, we saved a point on the road. Um, so that was great. But I think rather than just like talk through the game, um, and say, oh, we almost scored here. We almost scored. Or almost they almost scored, scored every. They almost minutes. scored. <laughs> um, it was well, another stressful one. Yeah. Since we do have some new names or names that we don't really talk about that much, why don't we just kind of go through and talk about these players, kind of like where they stand, um, stock up, stop, stock down, kind of thing. 
Oh. Um, the NASDAQ? Yes. <laughs> should, upper, we, should we- Upper withhold, NASDAQ yeah. club? Should we, should we hold them? Should we make a charitable contribution? Should we- Oh, yeah. Sorry, my mind is still in the... I have not filed my taxes yet. Yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear the helicopter just, circling. It's, it's just too many dependents. It just yeah. takes so long <laughs> to put all that information. Who uh, can remember all these birthdays? Not me. Uh, okay. All right. So let's let's start... Um, let's start with Evan Bush. What do you guys think of Bush? I, I know that he got he got injured... What in the second half at some point, but thirtieth uh, minute. Oh, yeah. is that it? It was only yeah. thirty yeah, minutes. Uh, <laughs> Technically, the sub didn't happen until the thirty-fifth minute, but it happened. Yeah, there was he got hurt. What happened? Oh, right, 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 right. Because it was another longest no, half he got in history. Kicked. It was kicked by a. Uh, was it Chicho? Or was it Luna? No, it was Luna. It was emo no, no, no. boy. He, he got hurt emo boy. before yeah. Luna hopped on him. Oh, okay. Yeah, Hawthorne, yeah. not Heights. You know what I mean? Because he's tiny. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I just thought of that. I didn't have that prepared. I like I like Diego Luna actually, but yeah, th- I I felt um, like he I, didn't have to fine. do what he did. Like he didn't have it, to run. That and didn't jump hurt on. Bush. Anyways, back to the question. Stock up for me. I agree. I he big time. I yeah. say he starts yeah. for any like almost any club. Over half the clubs, he st- he walks on the team and starts. Well, and I'm gonna some- kind of push this forward as well. Stock up for Hagen as well. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah. great. Also, Agreed. a guy yeah. who I the the things that impress me are the saves, the reaction saves, especially the upper ninety one, and uh, I think there was another huge or the one on one with Arango when the ball came across and he just made himself yeah. big and just took it off the chest because he's a man. He's a man. And there was one where the ball was played over the top to Arango, and he gets past uh, Camacho and gets a really nice header on it. Yeah. And I think that was when Bush was still in. Bush saves it, and Arango ends up like congratulating him essentially. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, save. it was – he was phenomenal. He goes out, I'm like, um, no. And then Hagen comes on. The thing that impressed me most about Hagen, and th- there was – I know this is going to be a weird thing, but like there were four times where the ball came in hopping or weird that most people parry away, and he just gobbled up. Like he did not uh, – even it. even in Tigres, like uh, Schulte had a couple where he would just kind of bat away. Hagen was able to just like swallow up. Like he also played – Are we going to call good. him like the turkey or something? Do we have a Deep. snappy nickname? Or? I, yeah. I don't like that. I, know, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> you can't – I don't like the term swap. I mean, can we say swap? It's a bird. It's a bird. I'll probably still That's, beep it. Yeah, you should. You should definitely beep that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so Bush, up. Yeah. Bush was Bush was good. Um, I didn't really, I, I didn't remember that he got injured so early, but yeah, that first half went on again for like sixty minutes or something. Yeah. Um, Which actually made sense because I mean, we were. I think we had like two injuries that were. Yeah. They were down for a That's hot fine. one. But I mean, the, okay. if our third string goalkeeper is as good as Hagen, like, great. Yeah. And again, really I well. I genuinely think we got Hagen, assuming that Schulte would be gone in the summer. I'll stand mm-hmm. by that. I, I think that someone will come along and pay a decent amount for an American goalkeeper because that's what the EPL and people do, and that will will slot Hagen in there and keep Bush as a backup. But I mean, mm-hmm. I I think all three of them walk onto most teams and start. Well, yeah. and there's a good chance we don't have Schulte during a portion of the summer due to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Correct. not decided yet, but yeah. All right. Let me switch Probably. gears on you just real quick. Arango, is that a slick back? Does that make him a piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's a wild slick back. Yes. Uh, I mean, what does it yes. look like dry? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I kept yeah. looking at it like. What does it look like when you wake up in the morning before it's all ready? to go yeah I, sloppy steaks the amount of yeah, hair sloppy, gel looks like sloppy sloppy i think steak. he uses a full-on bottle yeah i don't know, I don't know a baby bottle you know there's how it, does it you, stay that wet for the whole it. game i know how it does itty bitty jeans <laughs> chicken spaghetti and chicoletti's <laughs> <laughs> i yeah right. i don't know he's a villain he seems like a nice yeah. guy he looks like a villain yeah okay so we mentioned Camacho was back, uh, the Camacho is back tournament, and uh, 
he also he was the only starter. Is that right? The only holdover starter from yeah. Tuesday. Bananas. Yeah, I was wondering because uh, they said like there was ten changes, and for some reason I couldn't put my brain to be like who I thought it was Arston, but no, it was Camacho was the only one. So let's talk some more. Uh, let's talk some more Nasdaq uh, ticker symbol. P Q N T, uh, <laughs> Philip Quinton. P Q T. That's what I tried to yeah. call him yeah. last the, year. Uh, <laughs> the curly giraffe. Giraffe. Um, yeah. <laughs> the golden giraffe. Right. He's, he was sporting some golden girl type. That's what girls. I said. Yeah. yeah. He hundred percent looks like. I yeah. can't remember the what you feathered hair. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I've been Bear hearing about. Awesome. We've been hearing about him on Crew Two, and that he's like. You know, still kind of making, um, you know, unforced error type so, yeah. things. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Trey, go ahead. I, I don't have a love for him, never have, but definitely, I mean, even in this game, stock down. I, I'd say stock stays the same for me. But the bar was already low, right? I, I think... The bar's really low. Yeah, I... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Here. I don't think he played all that bad. He had some issues. I mean, it, it's hard to argue a clean sheet. That being said, we were very, so there were three people, a little peek behind the curtain, uh, that we were texting a bunch about specifically watching this game. Once the lineup got rolled out, we we're like, all right, let's really focus in on a couple of these people. One of them was Philip Quinton. His touches were relatively sloppy. His play was super slow, and he made a bunch of very bizarre decisions where he like kicked the ball out of bounds when he didn't have to. Got a yellow in the 22nd minute. Yeah, unforced. And it was like, man, like, no, we didn't give up a goal. And yes, he was taxed with uh, playing Arango. Totally. Sweet. Like, this is a very good team. But uh, when you look at our depth and everything, like, I, I, I feel like he's literally run of the mill. I was hoping he would come in and step up, kind of like someone like Hagen, like oh, third string goalkeeper comes in right. and actually looks like, oh crap, this guy's legit. Uh, right. We'll talk about Taha here in a minute, but like guys that come in and are like, I can actually see some positive. This was his kind of redemption. I felt like, like all right, man, go out there and really boss this game. And I think there were two times he was like Arango got a header twice on him, and I'm like, you're twice his size, man. You yeah. gotta be on defense, and these were defensive, not offensive. Like he should be clearing these with his head, and he put throws his arms up. And I'm like, dude, man, come on, man. I, I I'm with you guys. I was like, and I don't know how Mort feels about it. Like, Mort's here. Hold on, right? He just came in from Boston. I like tip of the hat, mate. Oh, Mort, what's up, man? I just got in from Boston. Tip of the hat, doing marathons. Stock down. All right, Mort, take it easy. Oh, that's crazy. So yeah, he's also he's also stocked down. So who else we got? I just want to know when the one man show debuts. I, <laughs> like, I don't. But the thing about the one man show is I don't talk, and if you get me to talk, you get your money back. Okay, let's start now. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sick Russell burn. Rowe, Jason Russell Rowe. Do we have any nicknames for him? No. I and we oh, not for lack dollar. of trying. That's a dollar. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh I'm gonna say uh, personally stock down on Russell Rowe. Um I don't think he's playing terribly. I just don't think he's playing currently as good as he has earlier in the season. Um Nope, I don't know, I'm some with weird you. touches, not great touch. <sighs> yeah. I, I'm with you, and for that exact reason that you just said, is his touches, his traps, um, not being able to hold the ball up. And, I mean, and this is saying a lot, because he already wasn't high on my list of, of players at this point. Stock down. Yeah, man. I don't want to spend too much time on this, because I'm usually a JR apologist. I... I still Always. think he can be awesome, but when you, when I was like, "Hey, let's watch," he was one of the people we we queued in on. His touch, especially coming in, you know, checking back, was always like five feet out in front of him. 
Contrast that to Matan. Next game, I'm sure Matan will start getting minutes. Watch when people play a nice little like sizzle pass to him. That dude traps it and keeps it at his foot within like six inches. It's bananas. And so does Rossi. When Rossi came in, huge. It, it was like night and day. It's like, oh, you can play a professional ball into him. R- you know, Russell Rowe didn't. I think what I want from him, from Russell Rowe specifically, and what we want with the Nazi system is we need someone like a Ramirez replacement that is pushing the line, stretching the game vertically, and he absolutely is not doing that. And if he's not doing that and he's trying to fill a different position where he's doing any of the other things we kind of ask him to do, everybody else on the team is better than him. Like Matan has better foot skills and vision. Same thing with, you know, Rossi, same thing with Cucho, same thing with, you know, Henestroza now on the left, which we'll talk about. But yeah, I, it's, well, I'm, it hurts, I'm not it trying hurts. to be negative about no, it. No, 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 no. But currently, stock down for me. Like, I'm not saying get rid of him. No, I'm not, no, no, you no. know, no, we're I, like I, do like, I do like Trapper Keeper for Matan. That's good. Uh, That's what good. about Taha? Ooh, okay. So, first time we've seen him, definitely been hyped as he came through crew two through the academy. Um, he's unbelievable. US Men's national team. I think he grew into this game decently, especially coming on for his first start. Um, a lot of his passes in the beginning were backward, but they were quick, they were precise, and they were exactly what you should do in that position. Um, so, for me, definitely stock up and as he I forget when he got subbed but it was right after he received the yellow card yeah um, 69th minute nice yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> he had started to move a, a little bit further forward as the game progressed mm-hmm. um, and he had a really good opportunity in probably oh yeah that, Maybe 60th minute. That run was that one range. of the best runs I've seen. Having him yeah. play on side and then run onto it was disgusting. And so he, for me, it was, yeah. it was 45 plus three. So it was just, it was before half. Okay. okay. And I, I couldn't figure out who played the ball to him on the replay just because it was not a clear image. But um, it might have been. Aiden. I'd love to see him play with more of the first team. Like, yeah him being subbed in late in a game and kind of getting to see him play with Cucho and the first the first squad. So, How old is this guy? 18. 18. 18. Oh. Col- Columbus native, too. So Legitimate. Legitimate dependent. homegrown. Yeah, yep. someone is claiming him as a dependent. I mean, he's sure. he, super hyped. <laughs> I think he definitely grew into the game. He's also someone that when you play those sizzle balls on the ground to him, glues to his feet and he had a couple flicks and like play ons yes i don't think he missed one and he reminded me of okay this is a bit of a stretch but he reminds me of more like a zeller ion where he isn't stretching the line he's not a you know a christian ramirez replacement they have similar eyebrows yeah <laughs> yeah they look yeah his haircut super yeah. sus haircut similar super yeah. sus yeah it actually kind of was <laughs> but it i mean Literally, the the game as he grew into the game and he got more confidence, he played great. And that that, that was a frustrate. That was the having was him the flicks. Yeah, were, like a couple of those things. And that run he made it made me go, okay, cool. That just knocked Russell Road down another peg in the depth chart. Taha, yeah. I would rather see Taha uh, come on. I don't know, man. I don't know if I I hear what you're saying, and I would like to see that, but. I don't think he just jumped Russell Rowe at this point. Really? What if he started scoring? I think he just Russell plays Rowe a or he Hubbard. plays a different position. <laughs> that that's the only knock is he just plays a different position for I Russell th- Rowe. I yeah, I think he is if we're doing like quote unquote like for like, I think he was is more of a uh Matan. No, we're doing stock up, stock down. Stock up. <laughs> stock up. Yeah, if we're playing um, checkers. He's the red team. playing chess. Yeah, I'd say stock up. It was great. I, I it, great. The yellow card wasn't great, but and I thought that was a red. Did anybody else catch that? Because they they thought the the first yellow that was on Arston mm-hmm. was actually. I was panicking. I was like, "Well, that's a yellow," and they gave him a yellow, and I was like, "Oh boy, we yeah. have to play a player down." Anyone uh, else you guys want to talk about? 
Pistroza. Um, I would like Sands. to. Yeah, D Jones. I'd like Sands, to do Sands or? and Matan and Henestroza real fast. All at the same time. Yeah, everybody yeah. who's talking about Have, talking you seen the one man show laid out, man. What do you guys think about Sands? I'm actually curious because I thought he's he's doing. I thought better. he looked better in this game than the other one. Yeah, I'd say stock stays the same on Sands. He's still coming back. He's fast, man. That dude is fast. What did we talk about earlier? That thing where you know you get hurt or someone you get hurt, and then the guy that steps in for you is better. We call that Wally like Pitt. Pitt. yeah, John Winkle yep. or whatever. Wally Pitt. Okay, John Winkle. No, nope. so you get John Winkle. So I feel like Yaboa. You know, we were like, you remember, like Sands gets hurt, and like Yaboa is there, and we're like, oh man, he's ugh, gross. And Yaboa has become this like insane player, and he still is. I feel like, if, to me, I would rather see Yaboa start over Sands, and I don't think, I don't think Sands is even come close to taking back his spot from Yaboa. That's my, that's my opinion. Uh, Henestroza, yeah. I want to touch on that during the Tigris game, and I think during this game too, he plays on the left side. He played with Yaboa. Way better, and I—I I tell you what, a game—the main game changer in this RSL game, even though it was zero-zero, was Henestroza coming in. When he came in, it was just like yep. four or five opportunities, and he just looked unplayable. He was on—he was on both came on at sides. The same time. Yeah, he was on both Arson. sides. He was just Man. running around. I, Man, I, I think Farsi's a stock down for me. Agreed. Good play. I mean, like, but. I, I'm not I like disappointed Arsene. in it. I'm not disappointed in this play. He didn't play bad. I am just meh. It's it's fine. I I, I just I, I can't quantify it. I can't. There's no one else, doesn't. dude. There's no one else. No, I dude, I you and, put no one else in his place. Correct. Zawatsky. No. I want to see the world burn. No, I mean, there is enough I, room in the world for both of those guys. If you're going to say, Man. who do you want to start, Sands or Farsi, I'm going to tell you Sands. Ooh. Well, they're on the left side. They don't hmm. play the same side. It'd be yeah. it'd be Arvston or... Put Sands on the right? What about Arvston or, um, Arvston or Farsi? Farsi. Arvston. Farsi. Nope, Arvston. I didn't, I, Farsi's more defensive. I, I, Arvston. The, the, ce- the ceiling on Arvston is higher. I agree. I kind that's, of agree. That's my I, only. I really liked his game-winning assist uh, PK mm-hmm. in that T Grace game. That was, I, I it was ice cold, but I yeah, I feel I, don't know, dude. I feel like Arston and Taha. If you give them the confidence, they go out there and they can they can turn heads. They are awesome. They can play great. I felt the same thing about Farsi last year. I just I don't know what it is this year. Agreed. And I think I mentioned a couple episodes ago that it just. Looks like he's like his ankles are like swollen and, and he like he can't cut. He's not moving fast. But I, I don't. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. One. I, one just, I, want to I shout always out. think of him as like Frankie Haydick. She's just like just up and down the right side. Hustle bot. Uh, one working hard. One hustle, hustle bot. Hustle bot. Hustle, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in on hustle bot. Yeah. Finally, everyone one stock up for me uh, is Chiberico. Yeah, what? He's yeah, been playing well when on. as he's come in and started a few has games. He played for with a, squad has, has there been an Amundsen, Chiburko, uh, Marrera lineup yet? Because Zawatsky is also phenomenal back there. But is it? I just wonder what it's like when you got a extremely left footed Amundsen in there with in the middle with Chiburko. I don't know if they have played together. No, I've never seen them in the same room. In fact, not in the press box making no. jokes. No. One of them has the flu. I've got questions. Okay. <laughs> we'll take those All off right. air. Let's uh let's break here. The internet's a big place, and if we're gonna read it, I think we should take a break first. We'll be right, right trap. trap. This episode of the Upper 90 Club is brought to you, as always, by Supporter Supply Company. Hi, friends. This is your good pal, Morgan Hughes, here to talk to you about a serious issue facing 96% of all crew supporters in Columbus. Why, not enough free shipping, of course. For a limited time, now through the eventual heat death of the universe, Upper 90 Club listeners can use the promo code Upper90Boys. That's boys with a Z on the end of it. 
at checkout for free delivery on absolutely any order over $10. But Morgan, what if I order $10 worth of stickers or those goddamned buttons or some other combination of small items that make you want to kill yourself? Will the free shipping still apply then, even as you curse our family while you package up our little tiny annoying ass order for us? <laughs> of course it will. That's just how much we here at Supporter Supply value our friends at the Upper 90 Club. So head on over to supportersupply.co and use the promo code UPPER90BOYS, that's boys with a Z, at checkout for free shipping on all your orders over $10. And don't forget to tell them that your friends at the Upper 90 Club sent ya. All right, we're back. Uh, oh, no. Ben, what are you uh, on the spot? What do you got going on? Going uh, I'm going to my second WWE match next Monday at the shot. Is The Rock going to be there? I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I didn't, He's wa- back I didn't in the watch mix, it right? yet. Well, I mean, I think he was for that special, the yeah. SmackDown or whatever. Boy, I, yeah. I, I feel terrible. Tommy's going to murder me. Tommy loves westling. Can you guys do the eyebrow? You no. Uh, Am I doing it? My daughter Am I doing can. it right now? No. You have Gary and Barrelers. No. Oh, Trey, Trey's got it. Holy cow. That's a Guillaume Beret. Guillaume Beret. Haas, not, Haas isn't even trying. He's got a great no. face for it. Though. I can move my ears, though. I can, so, too. <laughs> so why are you... I can uh, move my ears? <laughs> I can't yeah. do the eyebrow trick, but I can move my ears. Don't you call it wiggle your ears? You don't call it move your ears, right? Oh, sure. I'm the person who's an idiot? Okay, so <laughs> I don't know how we're going to... So, Ben, go ahead and uh, just read us the internet there. Go ahead. All right, first we are going to go to Twitter. The winner this week is Inui. Supplies, supplies. Um, there's a lot of good takes. Um he said, congrats to Columbus Crew 2 Capybaras for earning their first MLS point with this drawl at RSL. Unlike Cincy, there will not be a commemorative t-shirt made. I'd argue that there probably will. It's not too late. Yeah. I know. Never say never. Uh, but I do kind of want to speak to that just for a second. The fact that – are we the – I feel like we're the only team besides like maybe Philly that really utilize their – their crew, their, their their academy team, or their MLS Lex Pro, and are graduating these guys into some serious players. So, I mean, Russell Rowe, Habrun, Sands, Zawadski. Did Arfston play for Crew Two? Uh, no, he, he played for. And he's never been to Toronto. Yeah, allegedly. Go ahead. Uh, he San Jose too. He played for. He played for San Jose as a captain. Okay, Quinton Farsi. This is just from like the most recent. Aiden game, Morris, so. yeah, and a lot of the guys that got injured, like Aiden Morris, played for Crew Two before. I don't know. I just think that's like Maroka. I, Mar- I don't Maroka. know. Maroka. Yeah, I I think this is awesome. Like I totally stoked, and I think I I think we are going to see some breakout players in in our Crew Two, and I love the way we utilize that. Um, the other one I wanted to pull from the internet is from Reddit. Uh, Allen guy, Allen guy, Allen L guy. Who cares? Um. <laughs> he says absolutely alien yeah, alien guy. Uh, he says absolutely insane how many people are on Russell Rowe and Quentin and talking about needing to go out and get replacements in the transfer window. Y'all, all these are two of the lowest paid players on the team, third and sixth string in their positions, respectively. They came in and did a job that they needed to do. They aren't going to find better value positionally for the salary. And this is a capped league. So I kind of thought I saw I saw that and I was like, man, eh, whatever, man. This is just another guy talking. But once he started getting into like, you know, how much we play and where they at, they're sitting at, you know, third and six in their position and whatnot. I did think it was kind of interesting that we do go to someone like RSL who wasn't is an awesome team, has, you know, you know, their version of Cucho and Orango, and we shut them down to zero points with Quentin in the back. And, you know, Russell Rowe. And so, you know, you look at the starting lineup. I guarantee if you looked at the salary of our starting lineup versus theirs, it, the discrepancy is massive. And I, I just think that's cool. I think both of those is like a testament of like our front office, maybe. Of just like, you know, bigger picture of like, hey, 
were playing a ridiculous amount of games, way more than anybody else in the league, playing harder opposition away in Mexico, and we're able to come back, play our academy players, and get a result away is, I, I just, I don't know. We're, we're living in a dream world, even though, you know, it just, it's crazy. I love and hate this take all at the same time. Agreed. Because I agree, uh, like, a thousand percent with the fact of, like, I, I want to yell at Russell Rowe and Quentin and be mad, but then you look at it and like he says, it's like, yeah, this is our third and six six string player. Well, there's yeah, no six. There's no Absolute six string to be clear. Well, I mean, okay. there's when you not have three okay. center backs. There are not six pos- any. There are not six people who play any one position on a team, right? Yeah. Like that's that's a little misrepresented, but point taken. Yes. Um, point taken. We're this is what we're debating here is like, yeah, can we do better? Russell Rowe started this game. Russell Rowe has started other games recently. So, you know, the our argument could be made that he's not third string. Yeah, agree. Um, Quinton, boy, I was I was really surprised to see him start in this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't I mean what he's saying is like you can't argue I mean, the result was a shutout. Did he play terrible? No, he didn't make any like massive yes. gaffes. He wasn't. I, I, I've seen, I've seen <laughs> okay, people fine. play worse. But yeah, yeah. I mean, just Fair enough. It, it just puts things into perspective. Uh, I think both those quotes kind of sums up RSL in that the, RSL is a good team. They have some you know what you know what this kind of reminded me of as we're as we're talking about this and this takes specifically from Allen and some guy. Um, he knew is, it. Uh, the man. No, I, Alan and some guy is the name of the guy named Alan. Um, I didn't follow uh, that. Is remember Philly? We we couldn't we couldn't forget we lost to Philly four to one or something. Like, yeah, two joke to, handball four to oh, one. Yeah. Two joke PKs. First game of the year last year, twenty twenty three season. But when we played them at home later in the season, remember what they did. They marched out. They marched out their development team, and then subbed in their starters at halftime. Oh, that's they right. Beat us, right? They, I think they won. If they didn't I think win. They came back they, to tie. Yeah. I, I think it was tied, and they subbed in. But it, I just we, remember we got lucky with the tie. The reaction was that was a smart move, and uh, and I kind of feel like same same kind of deal here. And I don't know what kind of schedule congestion they were dealing with. Um, at that time, but um, yeah, all all more power to Nancy. Uh, get creative, uh, and uh, and we're, you know we're not dropping points, and we're not losing. Right. It's just so cra- like that's it's all good. Crazy, yeah. like our only losses to Charlotte, and that is at a complete asterisk, in my opinion. Like that game was like okay, give me a break. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, except for did, who? Yeah, didn't somebody say that? That one of the commentators said, like, they they found out how to how to beat the crew that day. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> that they figured day. out the Rubik's cube that is the the Rubik's crew. It's like, get yeah, okay, guy, guy who talks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did we reach the end of the internet? Yeah, I think we're ready for okay. the tables. Yeah, let's do it. Let's uh, let's set the table. So Eastern Conference, we've got Inter Miami and New York Red Bull with 15 points at the top of the conference. Philadelphia and the Crew with 13 points in third and fourth, respectively. Cincinnati has 12 points in fifth. So a little movement going on up there, yeah. up top. Although yeah. Miami has played nine games, some teams have played eight, and some teams have played seven. I feel like if you played Miami's more, the only team that has played. Yeah, nine. I feel like if you're tied at the top with 15 and you've played one more game, you get less. You well, should the, be. Yeah. Sexy. Why are we below like, Philly yeah. with more games? Like, okay, cool. Like, why are it, we below Philly with more goal games? Differential. I think it's goal differential. We're at plus three, and they're at plus five. Fine. I don't oh, like it. Uh, bottom of the East, New England with four points. Bye-bye, Porter. I, th- he's, he's, 
Yeah, get your resume ready because it's not looking good. I mean, the fact that they lost a <laughs> they lost a America like one hundred to zero or something. Did you guys insane. see? Did you see that they posted yeah. it on Twitter? Yeah, I would they just be posted, like, it was like it's like a uh, final result nine to two aggregate. It was just like <laughs> in the in the it should be a history video of, of yeah the 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 collective history. You don't need to post. You like, you're just, it's humiliating. Yeah. And like, you, you know, somebody needs to tell the marketing people over there to just like, you know, shake it off till next week. Cause like, it's humiliating. And yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, man. it was bananas. No, you're right. Yeah. And Miami and New England losing like that puts those Liga MX teams at a, gives them an advantage going into the further rounds of the tournament. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, was it last year where we had, I feel like, th- three MLS teams in the Final Four? Like, it, it's going to ebb and flow. And plus, they're in the middle of a season, so it, they're always going to have that advantage. I mean, it's not an excuse. And they have no salary cap, which everybody's wah-wah poo-poo about, which is... So then, well, okay, okay, all right. Man, are we going to talk just, about it? I could go so deep on that, Yeah. <laughs> Well, so let me just say this before you move on. I know we're still in the tables segment, but like Table. I sent you guys an article. Nobody yeah. acknowledged it. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's, <weird>. uh, <laughs> That's they, our thing. <laughs> they, I just, yeah, screaming into the void. Um, Discord. The Miami coach, uh, Martino. Mm-hmm. Is that his name? Tata. Yeah. Yeah. Tata. Martino was like, well, you know, we lost because of the. The roster rules of MLS. <laughs> yeah. so, of all yeah. the people. Of yeah. all the rules the that they're breaking. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's like you got Suarez and Messi and like. Meanwhile, the, the we're rolling out half team. our team is making like $47,000 a year. Like, yeah. And, and we're, we're also, yeah, we get a red card every game and we're like, <laughs> yeah, we're so, we're winning. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, okay, right. Tata, ahead, for Haas. sure. Go ahead, Haas. Yeah. Supporter Shield. Miami, L.A., New York with 15 at the top. And we got Vancouver, Houston, Philadelphia, Columbus, all with 13 points. So that's fourth through seventh. Uh, Real Salt Lake, who we just played, is in eighth Mm. with 12 points. Uh, Cincinnati also with 12 points in 10th. And then just thinking about this coming weekend, we got Portland coming up. They are currently in 20th in Supporter Shield with nine points. They've lost three and drawn, drew their past two. Um, okay. Don't worry, New England. You got San Jose supporting you down there at the bottom in 29th with three points. Jeez. Man. I tell you what, though. I No draws, seven losses. I love this league. I mean, the fact that it, one game... After so we've played what eight games roughly between all of us, you know there's one game difference, three points difference, and the top what 12, 13 people or th- right. thirteen yeah. teams. Like the parity is what they call it in this league. Is there's not like four teams that are in like the EPL, like Man City, where they just don't lose. Like it's always, yeah, it's fun, man. This is a great league. I love this league. Give me well, a hug. back to what talk. Give Goes me back to what Tata was saying. I mean, in terms of like spending more money, it's like it, it. You're successful in this league when your GM, Bezbachenko, true, figures out uh, the best way to spend the money. I mean, you know, like there's money being spent. They just spend all theirs at the top of the roster. It's so, top heavy. Just like, like for a, a coach, team. for a coach to. I don't know. It's just, it's so. It's so a porter thing. Yeah. It's like, a, it's it like, feels like a porter. Meh. I'm like, and look, I, I may have mentioned here before, like I have, I have legitimate birthright fan, fan, fandom for the New York Yankees. I don't really watch them anymore, but Allegedly. growing up, I used to watch them. But it's like, you know, the New York Yankees come out and like, meh, we can't win. We need we need more money. The salary cap is too low. It's just uh-huh. like it's it's totally insane. Yeah. To to hear that. And they are making roster rule changes this summer. Sure. 
is what is being discussed. Correct. But but nothing that's going to at least nothing that we've heard of that is going to expand it to what Tata is saying. Yeah, unless right. The, it's yeah. I think it's like expanding DPs and if you don't use all the DP slots, you can use more under 22 Correct. initiative yep. slots. Yep. I don't know all the details. The salary but. cap is a thing where you can't just buy your success. Well, and you I th- can't actually, have oil money, I, oil I, team. I if you I think if you read a little more in the article, I think he was he was mostly making a point for more depth like more slots kind of thing but it's just because he made no subs right in that well, game that they and it's lost. just like right. it's hard to really? get out of here it's yeah. hard to feel sympathy for for like somebody who has you know the best player in the world the best player in the, yeah, yeah. Our, yeah half of barcelona the best right. player in the world dear like, barcelona yeah. come to miami sincerely yeah. the tata yeah anyway okay uh let's let's uh so we you, you said that portland has nine points um, so they're below us in the table. We are going to um, go over to our predict picks. Do you want to go through that table real quick before we launch into uh, the results and in, in our predictions for next week? So currently in the predict picks table, we've got Mars in second place with six points. <laughs> I love, Trey, I love the way this is. I love this. Trey and Ben in third and fourth with five Friends. points. Mort with three points at the bottom. And me. His name is me. <laughs> His uh, name is me. First me. place, eight points. Uh, this week, Tracy and I each got a point for predicting a draw, nice although the wrong score line. And that's where we're at. And nobody else got it on the internet, right? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see. I mean, zero, 0-0 zero, is a hard, zero. a hard... No one wants to predict 0-0. No. Zero, zero. I'm glad our yeah. fan base doesn't do no that. No one wants to see it. No one wants to predict it. All right, let's get our predicts out. All right, let's talk about D's. I, I don't know. I, I, I thought I you got to think about that. I'm already sweating. Man, I don't even know. Like, I, buckle I up, Buttercup. My tongue is sweating. I'm not good at doing things. <laughs> You're dumb. All right. Uh, wow. So we, we're looking confident. Um, let's start with you, Ben. Oh, you come say on. three one crew. Oh yeah. That's how you say that. Um, let me look You're through thinking... everybody else's scores. Yeah, three one. Uh, I think Good a Vander, a Vander. They're like I was just talking about him. Uh, they're number ten, kind of a Zellerion type guy. Uh, Ferreira, that dude is kind of tight. He's done pretty well, he, so I think that they that's may. That's the one. That's the one there. That, that would I be see. the one. So he's either yeah. going to get a goal or assist. But having Cucho back, having our squad back, we're home. We get a week off. Uh, I mean, we are due. We are due for like a multi-goal game, right? I feel like this is the first game in a while where we don't have someone missing yeah. from a red card, and right. it's at home, and it's against a mid to lower table. I, yeah, and for some reason, and it's four twenty. Oh, damn. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spark it up, is, Blade. Is, is this this is the first legal legal four twenty, right? I'll tell you what. In Ohio. At the end of the final game, it was like college again, right? In the North right. what in the Nordic, it smelled like <laughs> insane. I it was just like it just smelled insane. I'll probably cut this. There was just a lot of weed. <laughs> I was saying there's a lot of weed. All right. And so uh since Mort is out, he did send me his and he said Oh no, well, he's here. <laughs> okay, yeah, you do it. You do it, you do it. I, wait, he left my house and went to your house in Chicago? What yeah, did he say? Yeah, yeah. Mort's he at your house. Up. Holy he up. He crap. Said, he said, Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Mort. Take it easy. Australian now. <laughs> it's like he's right here. This is amazing. Uh two to zero, mate. <laughs> Did you throw a shrimp good? on the Barbie? <laughs> yeah. That's Holy it. crap. That's what he said. That's Mort, what he said. Go be with your wife for the All Boston right, go, Marathon. Go, go. Get out of here. Get yeah, out of here. Get out of here, Mort. Right, mate. Foster. Get. Right. 
<laughs> Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Alligator Dundee. Did you just say beer in Australia? <laughs> That's not a knife. This is a knife. Okay. Uh, uh, Trey, what'd you say? <laughs> I said two nothing. Just like Mort. Two of them. Just, just like it. Just like Just Mort. like him. Okay. Anything to add to that? Uh, that's two nothing, mate. <laughs> Are you serious? Mort came to your house after Chicago? No, that was him saying his own. Score. Oh, that was no, that was me saying that was me being Mort. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I didn't want Save no your confusion. Score. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Haas, your score. Haas, what about you? One zero. One zero crew. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. We've seen that. We've Why do you hate that. the crew so much? Everyone's calling a lot of goals. We're not scoring that many. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. All right, I, and I said three zero, three zero crew. That's a that's a oh, that's I a get game. It. It's we're gonna be at home. We're it's just a victory lap. Uh, have uh, yeah, Nagby's seven rested. days rested. Rest. Rest. rested. Yeah, they had yep. yeah spring break in Monterey. Oh yeah, Monterey Jack. Have you guys seen the state? Captain, Captain Monterey, Monterey Jack. Jack. Uh, Google it, you youngins. No idea. Yeah. It's just... Okay. Captain Monterey Jack says, <laughs> tie your shoes. Tie your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just Haas. Okay. See ya, everybody. You guys go... So, yeah, I haven't seen it. So, <laughs> I, 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 uh, you guys go to the game? No, I actually will, I will be, be there. in Akron. I'm going to miss next week, probably. In I've Akron. got a show. I gotta support the record, man. I gotta hit the road. So I play a show in Dayton on the Friday. World tour of Ohio. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. We play Musica. Musica's an action a good venue. And we play Blind Bobs. Do you ever play Blind Bobs? You had to have played Bob Blind Bobs. Sure. In Dayton? Yeah, man. Sure. It's gonna be good. I've never seen it, but <laughs> neither is Bob. Uh, let's uh hey, so hey, speaking of uh new records. Uh, our friend Ahmed had a yes. new record come out last Did week. Did you guys right? get it? The limited additional edition? Oh, I haven't, I haven't ordered it. I haven't, you ordered, haven't it ordered it. I, ordered I, it. I will order it. I mean, I have every record, but. I I got it. It has the signed postcard. Yeah, what? Did, yeah, he it. signed a postcard. How did I, I got miss the purple this? record. All right, quick question. So I've ordered, I pre ordered his records before. He always signs Pizza Party and then his name, but this is the first record I've gotten that didn't say Pizza Party. And I was kind of bummed out. I was like, "Ah, oh, man." Did I miss the did I miss the special record, guys? Did I miss it? Yeah. You yeah. might have. There's one in the past where he signed it and like been like, "Ah, oh, what's yeah, that? yeah." It was yeah, was yeah, it yeah. the one with the pe- the pe- This one wasn't was it the, the case, peace sign one. Yeah, I, think so, I got the same yeah. one. He just wrote pizza party on it. And I was like, "Man, I love that guy." All right, so yeah, so to give a, a formal shout out. Yeah. Sin Kane, We Belong came out this week or last week complete bop it's good it's good it sounds like uh i got some marvin gay vibes in there yeah, yeah. there is some disco it's going disco. on, on some of those but it's songs not like it it's fantastic. not like crappy disco it's like afrobeat yeah. disco but it, with the, yeah it's like i put it on and it was just like vibing the entire time i was like okay i can't believe i missed the pre-order the purple vinyl is hot god oh i'm so mad it's good okay. but it's one of those records that you put on and it's like a, an actual full record like you put it on and every song just kind of kills yeah so it's not like oh there's like three singles and the rest of the record is just like somebody farting into a microphone it's like the whole thing just bops (laughs) i was playing it in the car on the way down to lancaster to play disc golf last lancaster and showing some friends it and of course just go down the rabbit holes of like oh i toured with him he played in our band we played his we were his backing (laughs) band then talking about how he's played with David Byrne and all this stuff. Uh, the uh, with like David Byrne, which is what's the the guy that they are doing William the for? Mm-hmm. He was and in Montreal. It, it turns out that my buddy that I was telling this to was at one of those concerts in New York oh. when he was really? there for school. Atomic uh, Bomb. Yeah, Nick. Nick Atomic was there. The, the so, band oh, is called the Atomic Bomb Band, and they did. Uh, it was like a. Yeah, like a, a recreation of this old uh, 
African pop star William Anyabor that David Byrne David Byrne like bought all the music Super rights specific. and then hired Ahmed our friend to Do be it. the music director. Yeah, and that's mm. and that is the band in which uh Mitch Rowland's wife Sarah played the drums. It was in the Atomic Bomb band. That's how they that's how they met. Oh, I didn't know um, that. That's how Ahmed met Sarah. Anyway, um we talked about that last week or 2 weeks ago with Chris. That's small. Um okay. Well, so you guys, a couple, couple of you, you're going to go uh, see Portland. Um, and then, yeah, we've, and then we pick back up. Whether we're at home or away against Monterey, we'll find out. But um, You said it's Tuesday? Well, the Monterey is game Tuesday. is the Tuesday, the 23rd. So following time and location. You TBD. know what he might do is, it, depending on what he wants, he might rest people saturday i didn't even think about that Ugh. yeah maybe i feel like i keep guessing like we're gonna come out and crush and it's like i'm playing high school people and it's yeah like, they're oh, still in the thick of it dang it yeah i didn't even think about that all ah, right all right well good luck at your show ben Thank um you. and uh well uh, i'll be watching the uh the chris doran call with you uh on on the uh, apple broadcast otherwise uh, have fun at the game, guys, and uh, we'll catch up next week. Go crew. Go crew time. Go. Thanks, everyone, for joining the club. We hope you'll listen next week and every week, even in the off season, to celebrate or commiserate. We'll save you a seat. If you like this podcast, please give us five stars and subscribe. You can email us at upper90clubpod at gmail.com. That's upper90clubpod at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at upper90clubpod. Go crew! (laughs) (laughs) Hi, girls! (laughs) (laughs) And then... (laughs) <laughs> I like see that there's a boy there. I say. <laughs> I said, and brother. <laughs> <laughs>